Hello, Bottom Nation. Hello, hello. Oh, little Bottom. Hello. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm in a great mood. And a lot of that is because of you guys. My live shows have been more incredible than they've ever been. And um, <laughs> I can't believe this is coming full circle to <laughs> actually kind of being happy the whole thing happened. <laughs> But anyway, um, thanks thanks for supporting me and coming to shows and being such good audiences and, and really being there for the comedy and for such a fun hang. Uh, Patreon.com slash WHS, donating a dollar a month. This might sound like very little, but it's actually a really great way for us to do financial planning. And we have a staff of three, so it's super, super helpful. And if you donate more than that, you'll get up to four bonus episodes a month. Um, and then this week we have comedian Alex Kim. You know, I saw Alex at a little bar show in Brooklyn and he was, I, I got there a little late. He was already on stage. I was about to go on stage. He was a comic before me. And I was like, God, this guy is so funny. He's so, so funny. So I immediately just texted Sydney and I was like, we got to get this guy on the pod. And I don't know him that well. I got to know him on this episode and we get into a lot of religion for if you are one of those people that's like, please more on religious trauma, more on queerness and religion. This is the episode for you. We really get into that on this episode and he's really, really quite funny. And he talks about how um, he denounced God when uh, he was penetrated for the first time. So there's that. Uh, and Kylie Vincent is co-hosting today. Uh, Maddie's on tour. We love that for Maddie. Um, and Kylie has been phenomenal filling in. So go follow Kylie, Kylie Vincent, the first on Instagram and whatnot. All right, guys. I hope you have a great week. Listener, this episode is brought to you by Babbel. The best way to learn a language? Immersion. Living where the language is spoken natively and using it every day. But that's not possible for everybody. But you can still learn a language the second best way. And that's with Babbel. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. And it's designed for real conversations with real people. That's what I love about it. Within just a few lessons, I was using that conversational language immediately. It's great for going on vacation, for example. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 50% off a one-time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription but only for our listeners at babble.com slash WHGS. One more time, that is 50% off, listener, at babble.com slash WHGS. That's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L.com slash WHGS. Rules and restrictions may apply. Listener, this episode is brought to you by me, Undies, my favorite pair of underwear, and here's why. First of all, comfort unmatched, all right? It's going to keep you warm, but it's also breathable and it's comfy. They also have a problem-free philosophy. Not happy with your first pair of undies? It's on Me Undies. Good things come in big packages at Me Undies. Get 20% off your first order plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash WHGS. That's MeUndies.com slash WHGS for 20% off plus free shipping. Me Undies. Comfort from the outside in. Gay sex was my denying of religion awakening. I grew up in the church, you know, grew yeah. religious. I thought I was religious. What type of church? A uh, Christian Protestant church. Okay. Um, wow. You know, I think I was I was just a lot of denial. I yeah. thought if I thought if I never touched a guy, I would I can't be gay. So like what was like the thing that clicked for you that made you be like, I'm finally just gonna do it? If you had been like ruminating on it for a while. I think I've always just been more horny than I am religious. <laughs> I need to come up with a thing for you. You said like molesting. <laughs> no, I didn't say molesting. <laughs> I said molested. Molester dod. Survivor. Um, that uh -huh. sounds too like. Not like molest in the past, but. Molested. Molested. No, no, no. She's in been molested. Past. Yeah, yeah, no. If there's any confusion about that, <laughs> I have been molested in the past. <laughs> Our viewership just absolutely. <laughs> They're like, oh, we're starting like this. Because each each co-host sort of has like a thing to keep me from getting canceled. And yours is the molested one. <laughs> and you're the molested one. I like the molested one. <laughs>
<laughs> like with Gara, when I first started with Gara, it was really the whole idea was like sort of these younger queer people who were younger and more queer than I was. Right. My youth is in the sound booth. But right. then it became just Gara. And then I was like, okay, my Gara was my youth in the sound booth. And Kate, you know, was this athlete, you know, more like sporty queer. I like how you're like, so one was like younger and smart and the other was like really athletic and built and you are just so molested. molested. God. You are just so molested. <laughs> well, but you do bring, you do bring, you do bring. Molested energy? Molested energy to the pod. No, no. Molested the, vibes. Poor Alex. <laughs> you can chime in at any moment. I didn't, I didn't say this to you. You can interrupt us at any moment. Okay, got it. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah what's your molested yeah. riff? Yeah, do you have a molested riff you'd like to- I haven't to found the humor in it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta oh, find it fast, bitch, because yeah. he's we're, actually we're, just we're... crying over there. <laughs> Wait. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I like it. Sincere. Sincere. Yeah, yeah, that's sincere, really nice. Sincere molested bitch. Yeah. No, but I do think like- <laughs> Whenever we have stories from survivors on the pod, it really resonates with people. Yeah. And in terms of queerness, like that can affect like your identity. It's actually your- so confusing. Like this, like, because you also already have problems with intimacy and then you're like still figuring out your sexuality like everyone else is that you're like, and whoever was your abuser, it's like, do I have a weird dynamic towards men? Do I date men mostly because like, I'm used to the like control of it. Mm. So it ties in a lot with my queerness. And it's like, like, uh, yeah, I just feel like that's like a big thing in in terms of um, when bi girls don't date women is because they're molested by guys. Wait, you think that's true? And sometimes I because you because the stereotype is the opposite. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. people will say to you, like, "Oh, if you've been abused, that's why you yeah. go the you other hate way." Hate your mom, so you go that other way, right? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. But like, if, if for specifically for me, if it's like a parental figure that like you still want them to love oh, you. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. yeah. And then that's it's, crazy. I know. So it's like this is like me trying to gain approval. And like with women, I feel so comfortable that I'm always like, it's like Maddie's joke. It's Maddie's joke, where's the fear? Yeah, I'm literally like, yeah, I'm not scared at all. So I guess this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. (laughs) (laughs) Damn. Uh, Anyway, we're in the apartment. We're having gay (laughs) sex. Wrong, wrong answer to being molested. (laughs) We're having gay sex with Alex Kim, comedian. I just, uh, honestly, I just saw you a few times and I was like, we have to get him on the pod. I really don't know much else about you. That's so weird because I listen to your podcast. So I know know a lot about you and your guests. So yeah. Name one thing. (laughs) (laughs) Name your most hated thing about Ashley Gavin. Yeah, name name what you hate about me the most. And then followed by what you love. Uh, uh, are we starting like that? <laughs> <Is> that- <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She, she likes to be razzed. No, no. <laughs> I, I don't know Alex well enough to do this. <laughs> okay, sorry. We, like we just like just met. Like we we for, really we just, really like, just truly. Met. Me and just Alex met. have known each other for a while, but not like we don't like no no. From the open mic scene. From like, the- what's your real name? I don't even know what's your real name. Lee. L E. Okay. Yes. Mine's Rose, so. Mine's okay. Helen. Isn't that awful? Oh, God. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> Helen. That's like, like an instant kind of written as a bad middle name. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like a good joke choice. Helen. What? It's my grandmother's name. Oh, yeah. My father's mother. Rose is like my great grandma's name. Rose is my grandmother's name and my mother's middle name. Whoa. Oh, it's almost like it's meant to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're in the apartment. We're having gay sex. We're having gay sex with Alex Kim. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Sorry for the super weird opening. No, I love starting off strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. If you can't, right you can't it. say it wasn't a strong choice. And it, it was a strong choice, but sometimes I don't even realize that we start like that. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, no, of course, because it's a normal. We're, we're comedians. Thursday. Don't yeah. you? Because f- yeah. I've seen Kylie do that bit, talking about being molested and stuff like that. <laughs> And, but you know. So for you, it's hack, it's boring. <laughs> yeah. Why did we even, yeah. He's like, no, I've seen this before. Come on, come on. We get it, we get it, you're like, move on, find something else. I move no. on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, uh, so it's just different now we actually have a conversation about it. You know? Yeah, yeah. I know th- it's true, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's also like, it's funny because people uh, take that as like being vulnerable, but it's actually like the literal opposite. You'll probably never be in a conversation with me and like me sincerely talk about it. Yes. It yeah. has to have a punchline. You, yeah. yeah. 
it's like mm-hmm. this thing where it's like, if it's a deflection. Yeah. No. You're not, it, it's like when, you know when people will be like, you're really brave. Oh yeah. Oh, you're, you, you're being brave for doing yeah. stand up. It's like, this is the opposite of brave. Yeah. I compulsively have to do this. Yeah. yeah. Only comfortable when it's on stage, where you're the only one talking, where it's in a controlled environment. If you talk to me about it on stage, I get like annoyed. I get like uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know. Because then it's like, it's like true vulnerability yeah. to actually have to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's and very interesting. Wait, don't, something about you coming out, was it, was, are, are you out to your family? So, uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm not out to my parents. Oh, this That's is so a bad true. decision then for you to do this. I mean, it might be honestly, but my parents, their parents are so tech illiterate. They're not going to find that. They, they, li- they don't list the gay content at all. They look up, we're having gay sex. <laughs> <laughs> and my son's name. <laughs> but, but the algorithm is so, so smart. It might know, you know, it might get to them. I think it's so smart. They'll know not to give this content to them. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're saying the algorithm That's was on your so side? Funny. Oh, That's funny. Awesome. That's how smart the algorithm's got. It's actually weighing the morality of showing someone a piece of content and whether or not they're they're ready for it. <laughs> they're like, we sense yeah. that you are out. Oh, you're not ready for this. No, no we'll see no. you a couple years out of line. <laughs> well, also you'd like, I mean, you throw like queer comedy shows and stuff. So I guess you've probably considered the fact yeah, that- Yeah, it's on your feed, right? Yeah, it's, but I blocked my parents and everything. Oh, oh yeah. okay, okay. Wait, so can Do you- Do they know that they're blocked? No, I just say I don't have, I'm not social. I should say that. And they believe that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Yeah, they do. Because my mom, I had to tell her to stop listening to this podcast forcibly. I had to be like, I had to be like, she was like, okay, I'll stop. And then I found out she was listening again. And I was like, mom, you, you have to stop. You cannot mm-hmm. listen. How to did this. you find out? I don't remember exactly. I think she accidentally slipped up and was like, I love this episode. <laughs> she can't not. After I actively said not to. Yeah. My mom, for all the things that my mother does wrong, she is incredibly proud of who I am. That's really And sweet. it wouldn't matter what I did. Mm-hmm. Is she would be proud of me, and she has no boundaries. Mm-hmm. So for her, listening to this podcast doesn't really bother her, right? Because she has no boundaries. She talks about her own sex life. Yeah. So like to me, and I'm like, shut the fuck up! I don't want to hear it, yeah. and I don't want you to hear this. One time, my mom was dating this really bad guy, and I was like, he's so gross, and she goes guess what? It's the best sex I've ever had. <laughs> and I was like, ew, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're not supposed to say that to me. And you're not supposed to say that about a guy in a sublime cover band. <laughs> like, He's in a sublime cover yeah. band? Uh, oh my goodness. And it's called Emil Bus, which is sublime backwards. So he's like really cool. You know, he is really cool. He's a ukulele guy, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> See, that's how I know my parents will not ever find this podcast. My parents are like so like sexless. They've never talked to me about sex or anything. Whoa. Yeah, like I remember my dad's talk, you know the talk, right? Yeah. My dad sat me down and he just said, you will grow hair down there. And that was it. That was it. That oh. was the sex talk. That was it. That was the sex talk. The hair. Yeah, I'll grow pubes. That's That was his sex talk. And then, goodbye, that's it. That is the scariest part. <laughs> I'm like, I, it, 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 pubes, pubes are annoying. I gotta say, yeah. but that's funny to me that of all the things he chose, he was like this, do you think he chose pubes specifically because he was like, how can I talk about this with as little sex as possible? But like mention that there will be changes. Like yeah. he felt yeah. obligated. He was contractually ob- mm-hmm. obligated to tell you that there will be changes coming up. And he went with pubes. Yeah. I feel like that was like his opener, but then he got cold feet oh. and then like, that's it. I actually don't want to get into opener. this. It is a strong opener. Yeah. Pubes is definitely a hook. I I feel like I don't even remember when my pubes came in. Like that doesn't even feel significant. Does it feel significant to you guys? <laughs> Do you remember when your pubes came in? Do you are remember you, where you, you were? You, Did you, you feel the room? <laughs> I smell candles and I'm seeing blue. <laughs> My therapist, I'm where are remember, you right now? I, uh, I'm trying to remember, it was significant, but yeah, I don't really? remember the day that I found a pube. Yeah. You like woke up and you're like, what? No, no. Cause, yeah, cause it's like a guy thing where like you don't hair down there yet. It's like, you said like when your balls drop, you know, this like toxic masculinity thing, you know? Yeah. When you're getting older, you just wanna. What is, what exactly do they mean when your balls drop? Yeah, could you could you actually, you're gonna have to do the labor for all men, all, all <laughs> cis men that have ever yeah. been on this podcast. Um, what is that? 
I think it's literally- They're like up there and then they go down. Does that yeah. happen in yeah. a day? Is uh, it sort of like leaves <laughs> dropping off a tree? Where you just feel something one day. Oh, Alex is getting ready. I don't think it happens. I think it's just like a- Alex, a we get it. Your balls are massive. They've been touching the ground since you were an infant. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I hate straight men. I don't think I don't. I never recognize a significant ball droppage. And I did a ball vertical change. I or maybe his one. balls are so small that you can't even feel. The oh difference. wow, that's no. fair. Yeah, no. it sounds like your balls are really small, Alex. Uh, no. Alex, I'm so sorry to hear that. What about you, other Alex? <laughs> I, think, I think it's when it grows. Battle of the you Alex balls. <laughs> I mean, they probably grow, I think but it, yeah, because then your dropping. voice drops. You can hear how how. Um, how modest he is. He's got massive balls. You can hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, I think, They're, I think maybe. Massive they ball might. energy. Yeah, yeah. M M D E M D E. M B E. <laughs> There's definitely a shift at some point. It's not uh, overnight, but it's gradual, you know. Huh. And they just get bigger, or do they actually physically descend? I don't know if there is a droppage. Like I don't know what holds it. But it's you like want me to, I'm quite certain there's no dropping. Is it on New Year's <laughs> Day? <laughs> like a ball drop? <laughs> <laughs> when the clock strikes midnight. Dude, how did we not come up with that earlier? <laughs> <laughs> it had to be a man that came up with the ball drop. Andy it's never Cohen a lady is shit Only on a blue moon. <laughs> yeah. um, an unfortunate ball drop. But I'm really glad that you're here. Uh, I'm Ashley Gavin, cis gay white woman, she, her pronouns. I don't know when this is coming out, but please, these these theaters are really big. I have to sell them. It's annoying when I don't sell them. So please, can you just get on my text alert and I'll text you? Please. Please, please. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kylie Vincent. She, Excuse her, hers. Me. What, I thought you were done. I have to come up <laughs> with a rhyme. Okay, go. I thought I came up with one. Didn't I come up with one? Um, molested jester. I feel, oh yeah, molested jester. That's great. No, it can't be that. That did not. The molester come. jester. <laughs> Molester though makes you feel like yeah, you're it actively. Makes me sound like. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just, you're a jester that talks about molesting. Oh. You're the molester jester. Okay. Yeah, I like it. What do you think, Alex? And honestly, when you talk <laughs> yeah, about something yeah. so heinous and wrong, objectively, it helps me from getting canceled because you're constantly reminded that I really haven't done anything bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. The molester jester to keep me from getting canceled, Kylie Vincent. Yay. Oh, I got a MILF tattoo. <laughs> Where is it? It's that. It's a oh, milk carton. That's great. And it says MILF. And it says MILF. That's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit about me and my pronouns are she, her, maybe they, I don't know. Oh, really? It'd be great if you went through a crisis on the pod. <laughs> it's, Wait, it's actually, yeah, save that for the pod. Yeah, um, save it for the pod. You are. Well, I just feel pod. like it's none of my business though. To know your own pronouns? Yeah, I'm just like, it feels like in the same way, like people think about death. I'm like, that's none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the great mystery. Yeah. Of, <laughs> of like the unknown. I get what you're uh -huh. saying. I don't think about my own death. Alex, do you think about your own death? Not really, not these days. Yeah. yeah. Not these days? What days did you? When I was, oh, I would think about it a lot when I was a Christian, when I was like religious. Oh, Because it's constantly like. Yeah, I mean, you guys are all preparing for it all the time. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so when did you transition from Christian to not Christian? Uh, well, I'll drop. <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve. When I, when I had gay sex. That's literally when up was until like, gay sex you were until, Christian. Uh, yes, moments before gay sex you're Christian. We have, did, can you hold on to this for a second? Yeah, yeah. Well, no. Let's talk about it now. Wait, did Alex? Did you have a, a an answer about the balls? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, it actually every biological male's uh, testicles descend into the scrotum by time they're six months old. <laughs> So it's that not was, even a that was beautiful. Thing. That was so good. You you really have an uh, a knack with the soundboard that we haven't seen in a long time. I I feel like I have the touch. I don't even know what it says. No, you have the touch. Like, you do. You have it. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's more so just what they're more implying is producing sperm. I guess with this with the phrase uh, balls drop before it's, technically yeah. the balls drop. You know when you're very infant. young. Yeah, very young because it's filled with sperm. Uh, yeah, I guess. 
Oh, my balls are so heavy. They're so <laughs> expert. I'm going to drop oh, geez, them. Mom. <laughs> I'm going to drop them. Oh, help, help. I'm dropping my balls. Help. That's like men's version Ew. of period. They're like, my ball jumped in a. Well, sorry. <laughs> um, do you mind introducing yourself to the people at home and anything that you might want them to know? Hi, uh, I'm Alex. Uh, I am gay. <laughs> uh, I'm a comedian in New York City. That's about it. That's really about it. All right, cool. Listener, are you listening to our Patreon exclusive, You're Having Gay Sex? Well, here's a sneak peek of what you missed last week. How did you figure out that you weren't interested? In men? I had, like, dated guys before I got into my long-term relationship with a girl. And then being in that relationship, I was always like, yeah, I'm bisexual. Like, I'm attracted to men. But because I'm with the person I'm going to be with forever, like, I'll never date a man. Um... So then getting out of that relationship, I was like, okay, here's an opportunity to date men. I sat down and literally visualized what it would be like if I was on a date with a man at dinner <laughs> and I gave myself the ick because I imagined telling a joke and him laughing. And I literally was like, ew, <laughs> ew. There are four bonus episodes a month of this series, You're Having Gay Sex, on our Patreon at the $10 tier, and then two at the $5 tier. Patreon.com slash WHGS. Listener, fast forward to the end of 2024. Think of your goals. What can you do right now to give yourself the best chance of succeeding? If you want to learn a new language, you should absolutely get Babbel. Now, language has always been really hard for me until I started Babbel. I never had an easy time in language class, but Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. And I found that that worked really well for me. All of their lessons, by the way, are backed by science, which I appreciate. And from personal experience, I can tell you I am picking up those conversational skills way faster than I did in school. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University and others continue to prove that Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Trust me, I learned how to ask for directions, how to order food. When I was on vacation in Mexico, it was so useful. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get 50% off a one-time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash WHGS. One more time, that is 50% off, listener, at babbel.com slash WHGS. That's spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash WHGS. Rules and restrictions may apply. Listener, me undies may not be able to get that Hey Mama's lesbian to commit, but they can offer you insanely comfy yet sexy undies and loungewear. They've got so many awesome prints, and all of their products will make you curl into a little ball and purr with joy. Plus, you can match your undies with your boothang for an extra special treat. You, them, me undies, that's magic waiting to happen. I absolutely love my me undies. First of all, they've got something for everybody, okay? Whether you want an all black classic or something like one of their new prints to spice things up, they've got something for you. The comfort is unmatched. Me Undies signature fabric is as soft and warm as a hug from your favorite sweater. It's breathable, stretchy, and oh so comfy, making it ideal for all day wear. And let me underscore breathable. You're going to stay fresh in there. And they've got a problem free philosophy. So if you're not happy with your first pair of undies, it's on Me Undies. Good things come in big packages at Me Undies. Get 20% off your first order plus. Free shipping at MeUndies.com slash WHGS. That's MeUndies.com slash WHGS for 20% off plus free shipping. MeUndies, comfort from the outside in. Yeah, so I don't know if you want this to be your gay sex story because I haven't told mine yet, but if you want to break format, if you feel free. Yeah, I mean, the, the gay sex was my, you know, denying of religion awakening. Cause I was, I grew, I grew up in the church, you know, yeah. religious. I thought I was religious. What type of church? A uh, Christian Protestant church. Okay. Um, wow. And you know, I think I was, I was just in a lot of denial. I yeah. thought, if I thought if I never touched a guy, 
I wouldn't, I can't be gay. You knew you were attracted to men? Yeah, from, from like middle school. Like yeah. I'd be watching, from then I was watching gay porn, but like I was to How myself- How old are you? 29. Okay. And I was like, I if I don't touch somebody, who knows? Maybe I like, I was still, even like in my first year in college, I was still like, if I could marry a girl, I could mm-hmm. do that. But then, uh, then I found Grinder, and I was like, okay, I could meet someone here. And I, I don't know, I had this- Did you compartmentalize it in the way that, I did a little bit of that. A little bit of like, well, there's gonna be a guy eventually. There will be a guy and I'm gonna like him and I'm just bisexual, but I just mm-hmm. haven't met the guy. Right. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That was yeah. sort of what I was hoping for. Like, like I compartmentalized it in that way. Yeah, I was similar. I could mold myself. I could do that nuclear family. I could do that. I thought mm-hmm. I could do that growing up, but no. Was, yeah. <laughs> no, obviously not. Yeah. You're clearly one of the gayest people I've ever seen. We keep playing footsie. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're like gay. I like it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you're, like gay. you're like super gay. <laughs> right? Would you describe yourself as like pretty monosexual towards? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. Yeah. Wait, so <laughs> how did you, <laughs> yeah. How did you feel about watching porn when you were in middle school because you were so Christian? That's like one of the things that. It, it was, again, a lot of mental gymnastics yeah. back then. I was like, again, I was like, if I, don't, if I could just, if I just marry a girl. Right. It's fine. This is this other thing Mm -hmm. as long as I end up with Uh a woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like he died for my sins. So it's fine. He He died for me me to watch gay porn. Exactly. Gay (laughs) porn is a sin. Yeah. I'll marry a woman. It'll Uh be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Like we all kind of, you know, are flexible with whatever sins we do, like sex before marriage or whatever. Yeah. Like, okay, I could finagle get watching gay porn. Finagle a little <laughs> gay porn. <laughs> yeah. I get one. I get one. Yeah. And it's gay porn. Yeah. You get, mm-hmm. you get like, one. Like, I, re- I remember things. in prayer and like, you're supposed to like, like, you're supposed to like think of your sins and ask for forgiveness. Mm. Right? Yes. And then I would always imagine God or whoever was the gay, like putting like tapes of me watching gay porn for me to watch. Oh, like that was my, my number God. one sin. I was like, please forgive me for this. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's such a funny one too, because like you, we're going to heaven. He's got, he's being like, you watch this gay porn. Meanwhile, your dad is up there being like, you touched kids. And they're like <laughs> both, you're both trying to get into heaven. And both of these, no, no, no. Look what you watched on the internet. God goes, come on, man. <laughs> I told you, it's in the book. Get it's a grip. Like, yeah. Like there are murderers up there. There are legitimate yeah. murderers. And then there's you, mm-hmm. Alex. Like who watch gay porn. Yeah. yeah. That's actually what they taught us too. That that murderers are up there with gay men, with gay sex. Gay sex is number one. Don't fucking do this. Maybe kill somebody if but, it's warranted, but, but yeah. don't don't have gay sex. So does it count if um, you have gay sex, then you kill someone? Like they cancel each other out. <laughs> So do you get do you get at a higher it's not level? Not a negative times a negative, and then oh, you get okay, into okay, yeah, 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 just yeah. just clarifying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's still two wrongs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's not one of those. Huh. Okay. What if they're, they're what the if person they're, that yeah, you had gay that's sex a good, with? That's what if you good. Kill, yeah? What if you kill a gay man? Are you actually the one yeah, that you had sex with? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you not, just kill every gay guy that you fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You Dahmer it, and the, he's in heaven. Apparently. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Is Dahmer in heaven? I think so. Huh. According to who? Because wasn't he religious? I don't know. Oh, oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that's the part. That's the part I remember about him is him being religious. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how much that dude loves God. There's a fear of God in there somewhere. <laughs> um, he did some other stuff. I forgot. But <laughs> so, so who is this guy? And like, how recently had you gone to church? Uh, my first time. Yeah, your first time. Oh, he was just some random guy I hooked up with on Grinder. Cause uh, back then too, I thought I was I was like crazy about it. I thought I, I thought I had to be good at sex. If I was gonna do it, be be like doing gay sex, mm. I would have to be good at it. I don't. That, I think that's like maybe my. I don't know if that's my Asianness about me. Or I like, was about to ask, is there something Asian happening here? Yeah, I was, <laughs> thinking, so, everybody, like, I was never like a studious, that studious either, but like, I felt like I had to be good at sex. Mm. You know, <laughs> that, where that comes from? It could be, it could be just queer You're going side. to Kumon, they're yeah. like, do your multiplication tables and how fast can you jerk off? <laughs> no, exactly, it was like, do it faster. <laughs> how many faster pumps faster. per minute? <laughs> <laughs> like I legit felt like I had to be good. That's really funny. If it's nine o'clock in the morning and you get off by 9.09, <laughs> Yeah, the after How many pumps per minute? <laughs> and if a train leaves in Detroit. <laughs> You're all doing like worksheets hard as a rock. 
<laughs> Whoa, I did coupon hits different than I thought. Yeah. I love a good coupon joke. Yeah. A, a come on joke. Oh, oh. 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 That was it. That was that it. That was it. That, that was, was it. money. So you thought you had to be good at had you had sex when like how much had you done with men as you when you went into college and you found found grinder? So like yeah, uh, my freshman year is when I started. And that's when I felt like I had to do like a workshop on just sex and do as much experience, get as much exposure to it as possible. Like, like it was an internship. I don't know why that's- I Is this the way that you're justifying it to yourself, <laughs> do you think? I felt like I had, for some reason, I had to get my numbers up. Mm, like totally. I always already felt I was a late starter, right? Yeah. The, like the media, at least when yes. I was growing up, yeah. Yeah. was like everyone's out in high school, you know? So they have experience with people and I was in college already. So I gotta get my numbers up. And, and it's so funny because no one was out. You're no. watching Euphoria, like, damn, I'm really behind. <laughs> no, I was like, no, I was literally watching Glee, and I was like, I should do this. Like, is this for me? No, I mean, Glee was so ahead in, yeah. in when it came to mm -hmm. being gay. It was actually quite far. I think yeah. that was the first gay kiss on television. Glee between really? two men. Yeah. Oh, the lesbian relationship was so awesome. I don't even. I never really watched it. Oh, Santana oh. and uh, Britney. Yeah, the cheerleaders. Oh, yeah, that's right. Jen, that was big for Jen. Santana and Britney. Yeah, I could see that actually. Yeah, cheerleaders. Um, but anyway, you're so you, you're in college, and are you having sex or just like kind of messing around? Uh, just having sex, cause like I don't I, maybe there's some shame associated with it. I would just Definitely. hook up with strangers, like just people on the app, mm. and it was just about meeting as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And the first time it was just, it was just you know just I I invited some guy over to my dorm while my roommate was out, and you just. Uh, he just fucked me, and then he didn't even he didn't even finish. He just he just didn't even come, and then he just kind of left. That was it. That was yeah. Like, when did wow? When did he decide? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I always thought with men, it's like you come. That's the whole fucking thing. Yeah. When they it's, it's when they just stop getting hard. Oh. Okay. And it's like okay, I guess that's not happening. It's okay. Right. Yeah. And they just leave. And that <laughs> was when you denounced God. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no wait. one even fucking came? Good. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I think I was like, I already did it. It was like, a, it's either did it or not did huh. it, you know? And uh, I had to just, if I did it, then I'm going to hell. I guess I'm going to hell in a, what was it saying? Hand cart basket. Oh yeah. And it's like, so I'll just, I'll just double down on this lifestyle. That's a low bar of love. If, <laughs> if for God, like if you don't even come, you're like. I know, seriously, you gave up God quick. Yeah. Because you know, I you were always, giving him up. You were probably on your way. I was, right. I was trying to justify how could I square this lifestyle mm. while still believing God. So like throughout my mm. experience in church, I was always try to ask the question, find the answer of like, is this possible if the God loves me, but I do this, I'm going to hell. Like, is it that mm. black and white or is he a loving God? So I've always trying to mm. find that answer for myself. Gosh, that's just so, you're going through so much as a yeah. 19 year old. Yeah. You're trying to learn who you are. You're dealing with your sexuality crisis. And then you have to throw in whether or not your God is a loving or fearsome yeah. God. <laughs> like it's so, it's just too much. Yeah. It's too much for a 19 year old. It's literally like, you're you're like trying to figure out, like if you're in a relationship with someone, you're like, eh, this technically isn't cheating if I'm doing this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. How, how far can I push the boundaries with God? And are you religious today at all? No. Not, not at all. even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Because some people are able to find that question, the answer yeah. to that question. They find a church that is more open minded about, you know, queerness and stuff like that. Yeah. But I feel like for the most part, people pretty much just leave. Yeah. And like I know I know gays who are in church. I, I don't know. I, I still kind of judge them a little bit. <laughs> I, I think because like, no, it's okay. Yeah. yeah. It's an institution still at the end of, even if it's like a progressive church, it's like the, what church represents is like, there's so much like abuse and, and coercion and like all this yeah. shit. But to churches. be fair to them, they're trying to move away from that. No, totally. And also what I actually really admire about people with religion is that they have beliefs in spirituality that it's like, that's like a deeper fulfillment. Yeah. I'm, I don't think I've ever I'm had that. I'm a deeply spiritual person, but I don't go to church. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I totally get the spiritual thing, but if you go to the church, if you subscribe to the church, that's where I judge you. I'm like, you, <laughs> like if you actually if don't you're doing like that with a, in a building with other people. Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of gross. That's kind of gay. That's kind of gay. That's actually, gay. Yeah. <laughs> Stained glass is kind of gay. 
Wait, so how did it like- it's beautiful though. <laughs> yeah, it is nice. What was like- <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a church down the street and they've been restoring the stained glass and it finally, they took the scaffolding down and I thought, I have to pretty. go in and look at that. Yeah, so, well, sometimes in Manhattan, I do like, well, you know, when they're open, I'll like go and sit yeah. in there. We, we, we're all coming out as going. <laughs> I mean, we were all very Wait, I love church. Yeah. I forgot about that. When I visit old schools, I go to the church, take pictures. That's, yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful place on campus. It I really is. Yeah. So like, what was like the thing that clicked for you that made you be like, I'm finally just gonna do it? If you had been like ruminating on it for a while. I think I've always just been more horny than I am religious. <laughs> That's awesome. Just what you that. just described though is, it. it's such a, at the end of the day, that is what the church is trying to win. Mm -hmm. The mm. church is trying to win religious versus horny. And the rest of us are like, horny wins, man. Yeah. <laughs> horny <laughs> wins every time. And for a small sliver what of- What kind of sex are you guys having to make you think this? That, <laughs> what do you mean? I don't think I've ever had sex and been like, like horny wins over everything else. Are you serious? I had sex yesterday like that. And you feel that way? Well, I never had God, so I don't. So yeah, you don't even have to consider. But what about other things? Horny, for me, this is actually a great question. <laughs> what is better than sex? This is the classic mm. Twitter meme. What is truly better than sex? Mm -hmm. Oh man. For me, it has to be probably food. When the algorithm works for you. Oh, actually, yeah, I'm really sorry. Um, let me, a uh, milli. When a, a video a goes viral. on, a, yeah, on yeah, yeah. a clip in like a day. Like if I hit a million a day. Woo! You've never come so hard in your I, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Waterfall I come down pretty, there. Pretty, <laughs> pretty, pretty wet. Uh, a good meal maybe, but even that, Better. there's mm -hmm. sex that rivals the good meal for sure. Not all the sex. Right, but what about you? Um, what's better than sex? Probably most things. Really? Yeah, okay. I'd say so. I really like conversation. <laughs> I just turned into this, a douchebag. Yeah. This is better this, than sex? Oh, <laughs> sorry, Alex. Uh, this happens a lot. I'm so sorry. I'm No, 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 I, I love your feet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, no, I, I don't know. I just feel like sometimes, sometimes it is really good, but then like after, well, I guess you're in a really loving relationship. Yeah. So that's really nice. Cause it's like, they're there after. <laughs> Wait, but I hate that. I hate, I hate oh. when they're there after. <laughs> I just want them to leave. I kick them out. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to hang around. I yeah. don't hang around. I just want them out. No, we're not hanging right now. This is strictly business. <laughs> Jen loves a cuddle though. She really likes to cuddle. And do you like to cuddle? Yeah, but she has more stamina. At to a certain cuddle? point I get antsy and I'm like, we gotta stop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. have to get up and do something. Right, right. But she'll lay there. She will lay there all So do you think fucking day. she would say cuddling is better than sex? Jen. Jen. I didn't even know Jen was here. <laughs> She might be in a meeting. Oh. Hey, anyway. Jen, can you just stop your meeting real quick? Yes, yeah, seriously. Let us know. <laughs> like, uh, what's better than sex for you? Oh. I, oh. Jenny? Hi. Hi, Jen. Hi, honey. We're talking about what's better than sex. Hit that mic. And I was saying that you really like cuddling, and Kylie <laughs> wanted to know if for you cuddling is better than sex. I feel like it's part of it. Oh, so the cuddling is part of the yeah, sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Included in. <laughs> what were your answers? I uh, said sometimes a good meal occasionally is better uh, than sex, but not. Thanks. Great. <laughs> 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 She's like craft mac and cheese. <laughs> Popeye's takeout. <laughs> um, well, sometimes, but great. not all the time. I said everything's better than sex. <laughs> And I also said that getting a cool Millie on a clip within 24 hours yeah. is sometimes better. Going than viral. Sex. Good. Oh, I'm so glad I came in here. Thank I don't, you for I having don't, me. I don't actually nice think. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. <laughs> this is Alex. Hi, Alex. Um, that's that's not actually true. And I love you so much. Oh, great. Love you. <laughs> Jen is such a good sport. Thank you. I know she really is an angel. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, Kylie, um, the reason I think the reason the reason why you think anything is better than sex isn't it because you were molested? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I guess in a lot of ways, sure. I think like, though, I like, I compulsively have sex. So I'll kind of- Are you serious? Yeah. 
I'll kind of just like have sex. Oh, you're perfect for this podcast. Yeah, I can't stop having sex, guys. Just like you. Um, no. <laughs> no, you guys don't have sex. I don't. They can speak for themselves. Okay, this is better. Sound sex off in the comments. Sound off. Do you guys have sex? Sound off in the comments. Subscribe. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I I compulsively have sex. Like I feel like I don't really have a choice in the matter sometimes because. Are you serious? Yeah. Kylie, you're saying like some shit. Where, where, how long have we been recording? 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> oh. Kylie, you're saying some shit. <laughs> That's big. What you're saying is big. I know. I don't, I don't think like I'm a sex addict. It's just in terms of like. This is how it starts. If I have a. Are you sober? No. Okay. I, well, I'm in, so I'm in a 12 step group for survivors. And so yeah. I mm -hmm. know that's like one of the things that people have trouble with is either they, they call it, this is like. I feel outdated. They call it like anorexic towards sex or like like just compulsive sex because in your pattern, it's like you either like don't want sex at all or you're like, this is the only thing I can offer there you. There are many, I, I have, there are many, many archaic, not good things about 12 step program. Totally. And I think everybody knows that. Yeah. But here's why I also don't think that totally matters. Yeah. Because if you are an addict uh -huh. and- your life is being ruined because of drugs, gambling, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's that big a deal to be involved in an archaic program yeah. that you, has methods that maybe aren't the best, but mm -hmm. it keeps you from ruining your life. Yeah. Because my dad was sober. He yeah. went through 12 step. I know a lot about the program. Mm -hmm. I've, um, that being, I don't agree with all of it. Totally. That being said, my father's, my father, ruined his own life yeah, and then he rebuilt it after he got sober. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So it's like- It's what they say too is like, take take what resonates with you exactly. and leave the rest. Yes. Like church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, exactly, like church. Oh or my like God, being gay. I love God. Oh, no, I don't know. It didn't totally no, yeah, take a little gay. bit with yeah. Don't do the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more- Take a little butthole, take yeah, a little pee. Take a little here and there, <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I read the literature in there and I'm like, what? This is a crazy thing to say. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, uh, I think in my way, I just want to like connect to people yes, further. Yes, I yeah. think that's like the only way, but I, I'm aware of that and I'm trying to work on it. But also like, sometimes I'm like, who cares? Like nothing matters, you know? Do you guys ever get to that point where you're like making decisions and you're like, actually nothing's a big deal. We, we have some things to unpack, Kylie. <laughs> 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 You're bringing like a realness and a rawness to the pod that I don't think we've ever had, and I love it. Oh, that's epic. I wonder how people are gonna feel about it. I hope you guys feel um, not scared for me. I'm a little <laughs> no. frightened for you, dude, but I'm here for you. I'm in all the stuff. I'm in all the yeah. therapy, the yeah. group therapy, whatever. But I think that's the thing about growth. If you're not like really looking at yourself, like yeah. if you're not like scary looking at yourself, not, nothing's gonna change. I'm also like one of the only people that are like vocally analytical about myself. And like, I'm not really afraid how people are gonna receive it. Cause I'm like, like just- <laughs> wait, wait till you're on the internet, buddy. Oh, <laughs> um, but I feel like anyone hates what I say on the internet anyway, just cause like it hits like Midwestern guy TikTok. Not here, well, we'll find out. Not here. Not. We'll find oh. out, yeah. I mean, do you feel you're like actively working, you know, to reflect on yourself or do you like also like throw yourself into work to distract yourself from? Oh yeah, definitely yeah. throw myself into work yeah. for sure. That's what, I mean, I feel like that's what stand up is too. It's mm. like, go, 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 go. Yeah. And it's accepted in this. It, it's not only accepted, it's encouraged. Yeah. Hustle, you gotta grind. Yeah. yeah. You gotta do spots. Yeah. How many spots Sports. you do last uh -huh. week? I did 20 spots last week. And they're showing up at the fight. You're standing outside the session. You got anything else tonight? I've got five more spots tonight. I yeah. could not care. I go home, cut a clip, cut a clip, go home, cut a clip. <laughs> got a spot, cut a clip, spot, clip, <laughs> spot, clip, spot, clip. <laughs> Us as DJs. And like, I totally like subscribe to the, the gay belief that like, if I get hot, I'll be happy. You know, once I do that. Mm, once wow. I, yeah. And, I don't need therapy or anything. I'll, once I do that and be hmm. famous, have money. It is interesting money. how the male gaze, this is, we should actually talk about this. It is interesting how the ma male gaze, when it comes to gay men, it is so, I, I look at gay men and I'm like, man, it might be worse for you than straight women. Mm. It, like, hmm. cause the, like you guys are all so 
Not all of you, obviously. But there's a thing, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's bad, but we're still men though. We're still like more accepted in society, you know? Oh no, that's yeah. not how I meant it. I meant this is the male gaze specifically with, bo- oh, to each with other. body image. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Don't you think it's tough out there? Yeah, we're very cold to each other. Like, like you literally are invisible if, you're don't, if your body is in a certain way, you know? Mm-hmm. But yeah, sorry, I'm on a, I'm, I'm a little out of it today. So I'm having trouble like maintaining the flow of the episode. No, it's fun. I also I feel like yeah. we were yeah. jumping into a lot of like, like intersectional conversations. Yes, yes. Which is kind of, which is really cool. Cause it's you cool. come from a background and that you offend everybody possible. Yeah. It's perfect because everyone's offended equally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you do like theater in high school and stuff? Yeah, like that? yeah, yeah. I was Rolf in Sound of Music in high school. Shut up. Yeah. That's awesome. I had an Asian Liesel too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they called her. Asian Liesel. Asian That's Liesel. what all the Asians called her. <laughs> the Asian Liesel. <laughs> And like I had, to, I have a picture. Like I have a swastika. Like they gave me an armband swastika for no. the, as a part of the costume. I wonder if they still do That's that. That's so wild. That's weird because it is a costume and it's like yeah. historically correct. They fucking do Rent Junior. What's Rent Junior? Rent like the without musical AIDS? about yeah, AIDS. Yeah, did they call something yeah. else? AIDS Rent the without flu? AIDS. The I think flu? they're just, they're like oh, man, don't get we can't make a rent because we have the flu. <laughs> <laughs> We're sick. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously, what no, is Rent what's Without Rent Jr.? I would love to know, but I- Can I, we look up the plot of Rent Jr., please? Thank you, yeah, Alex. Can awesome. we go to a middle school and just watch it? <laughs> and live reaction. Can you find the nearest Rent Jr. near our location? <laughs> and get, we can get the script. Oh my God, they did hairspray in um, like where I went to middle school and it was like a white suburbia area. And they put instead of because there's no black people, they put oh, no. scarves on their neck to represent the different groups. I was gonna say because yeah, wow. I was gonna say, oh my god, they didn't do black. That's face actually today. crazy. Because then, are you like, okay, is this okay? Because they're trying to bring some culture to a place with no black people, or should they just not be doing the show? It is kind of a weird. Huh. It is sort of a weird philosophical question. Well, I don't think like Hairspray Junior is going to bring more people of color to that town. No, but like maybe, you know, like just to talk about racism. Oh, sure, sure, you sure. Know? But, you know, like it, it, have you met like theater instructors for youth? They're like Hairspray Junior needs to be the best production I've ever put on. <laughs> it's not like about teaching children. It's about like remember your fucking lines, Jimmy. They they're like they're like fulfilling something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. themselves. We um. What what was I gonna say? Fuck! I'm so out of it, dude. <laughs> I've been on tour and I've been doing multi cities every Got weekend it. and I'm just so tired. Um, sorry, that sounded like a flex. We get it. You're so famous. Tired. You're booked and busy. So I'm, I apologize. God, I was just laying in my pile of money. It's kind of <laughs> hard to sleep when my pillow is a load of cash. patreoncom slash Uh, get, uh, more cash for my cash pillows, please. <laughs> This is the biggest thing I've done this month. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh. Alex, you have an answer? I do. I mean, what I think bigger? it's still about AIDS. <laughs> it's still about AIDS. Rent school, rent school edition is what it's called. Rent awesome. school edition. And it's still about AIDS. They just, uh, it says, uh, they uh, <laughs> consist of minimal changes to language and the removal of one song and the removal of most cuss words. Okay, okay. The the song Contact was removed. Oh, the song where they go, I have AIDS, I have AIDS, I have AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I haven't seen Rent. Oh, oh. Um, The one I was gonna say, when I was in middle school, there was a kid named Zuri. I forget her last name. Mm. She's black. She went on to become, I think she's um, an actor. I think she's still working. Cool. Um, she was on a tour for some major touring musical. I can't remember. Anyway. SpongeBob. It was SpongeBob. <laughs> but she, there were not many black kids at it, my school. Not enough to like think about, think about like what productions you were doing. Right. But literally, Zuri, so Zuri is like really good. Yeah. You know, she's very talented. Yeah. And the, the middle school theater guy knows this. Mm-hmm. And every year, you know, he picks the musical. And then soon as Zuri gets into sixth grade, that he knows Zuri's on the way up. Yeah. So he picks Huck Finn as the uh, as the musical. Oh. And I was like, oh. this is the only like this this is too on the nose, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like 
Yeah. I get it. We, uh, if she were not here and so talented, we wouldn't be able to do this. Yeah. And I want her to have a lead role for sure. Mm -hmm. But like, this is so weird. That's, yeah. yeah. It made, it was, it made, I was a child and it made me uncomfortable. Did, was everyone else aware or were you? I never, I never spoke about it because I yeah, didn't have yeah. the ball. I'm 13 years old. I yeah. didn't have the balls to be like, hey, can we talk about the implications of this, please? Totally. Like, I don't know if this is appropriate. It may feel tokenizing to Zuri. Yeah. Like, I didn't have like, that Like, what language. was it the year before? What was the musical before? Like, Joseph in the Amazing Technicolor yeah. Dreamcoat. <laughs> <laughs> you know Jesus what I mean? Junior. Christ superstar. <laughs> Oh, listener, it's it was just Valentine's Day. It's February. It is cold. You want to cozy up. And let me tell you this. You will not find anything cozier than a Helix mattress. Okay? Cozy certified by your commander in top. Let me tell you why I absolutely love my Helix mattress and tell you about the best sleep that I've gotten in my life. First of all, you can take a quiz, the Helix Sleep Quiz, and find the perfect mattress for you in under two minutes, no matter what you have going on, maybe some lower back pain, maybe you get hot, they've got something for you. And, you know, it's it's stressful buying a mattress, and Helix makes it so easy. Oh, no stress, so you can sleep at night. They offer a 100-night trial and a 10- to 15-year warranty to try out your new Helix mattress. <laughs> Don't just take my word for it. Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ Magazine and by Wired Magazine, and it's even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go-to solution for improving your sleep. I know it has improved mine. And right now, Helix is offering 25% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash gay sex and use code HELIXPARTNER25. One more time, that's helixsleep.com slash gay sex and use code HELIXPARTNER25. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now. Oh, listener, I know you're going to like this one. Solo pleasure is a healthy and natural means for everybody to explore their bodies and desires, aiding in understanding personal sexual preferences and potentially enhancing partnered experiences. Each person's body is unique, so it's essential to explore diverse options and listen to your body for whatever feels best. And our friends at Lalo sent me the Sona 2 Cruise. And when I tell you it's amazing, oh boy, Valentine's Day is coming up. So maybe when you're mixing things up for Valentine's Day, in addition to that, uh, you know, chocolate lube that you got going, bring in a new toy. And their toys have the best technology. The Sona 2 Cruise uses sonic pulses that resonate deep into the internal structure of the clitoris for an entirely new sensation. And I'm, I'm blushing. I think you can probably hear it saying this stuff, but they are not wrong. And sit down for this one. This toy has a lot of surface area to cover every possible nerve and neuron or whatever. Its softer, deeper, bigger mouth gives you complete satisfaction both inside and out. Keep the romance alive beyond Valentine's Day. The month of love continues at Lalo. Visit Lalo.com for exclusive discounts on luxury products and use code GAY10 at checkout for an additional 10% off your purchase. Don't miss out. This is love extended. That's Lalo, L-E-L-O.com. And use code GAY10 at checkout for 10% off your purchase at checkout. Go get it, listener. Did you come in with a story? Um, I might just save mine for another week. I mean, I kind of, I don't, I didn't have gay sex, but I have a gay crush. <gasps> yeah. Oh my God, is it a comedian? Please tell me no, it's, no, not, no, a it's not a comedian. Oh my God, I is it a barista? <laughs> Same thing, isn't it? No. Yeah. <laughs> she works in compost. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? Are you serious? You could not have come up with a more lesbian thing. <laughs> She's, yeah. we ate soup and played guitar together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. She works in compost. in compost. What the fuck does that mean? I I mean, I don't know. <laughs> when you <laughs> met her, you were like, "Oh, what do you do?" 
Yeah. Can you say her name? Are you comfortable saying her name? Otherwise, we have to pick one. No, I'm going to give her a fake name. Yeah, let's give her a fake name. Her name is um, uh, Randall. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yes, and checks out. Yeah, Randall. Randall, the girl that I have a crush on, <laughs> <laughs> works in composting. Um, I didn't know what she did when I first met her. I just met, I met her through like mutual friends and I thought she was really cool. And she's like a little bit Is quiet. Is she wearing like a jumpsuit? Is she wearing like a garbage suit? No, she wasn't wearing <laughs> a garbage suit. When I like think- for running? <laughs> like what do you mean? <laughs> no, like <laughs> she's not inside the she's compost not, trash. Like, what Oscar are you the grouch? talking about? <laughs> we don't know. She's Oscar the, Randall the grouch. <laughs> Randall the compost grouch. That's what she was doing, working in compost. <laughs> she just pops her head out of your, your, your pussy. And she when it comes out. She's... <laughs> Randall the grouch. <laughs> Randall the grouch. Is she grouchy? Uh, no, she's- Okay, she's pleasant. She's really pleasant and really sweet. Wow, so you met her through friends. Yeah. And okay. We've been like hanging out one on one, but like it, it, they're not being called like a date or anything. You don't know what it is. I, I, I think like it's building into a friendship, but I, I mean, I think she likes me back too. Yes, because that would be like it's crazy. It's so crazy. Lesbians. Yeah. I don't know how familiar you are you are with my people. No, I'm a big fan. I big support. Fan. <laughs> <laughs> but like so many times, it's like I don't know whether or not it was a date. Yeah. Of course it was a date. You mm-hmm. fucking idiot. Yeah. Was it, we, we, yeah, do you mean it was just a hookup? Is that why? No, no, we haven't. <laughs> Literally, he cannot understand. He's like, wait, so the two of you are like no, we're eating soup? <laughs> Literally, it was not a <laughs> metaphor? <laughs> I thought eating soup was a metaphor. Me after scissoring, I wonder if she likes me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how gay men are. We're well, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. But, yeah. but, for, yeah. Les- for, but for lesbians, it's not like, oh, I wonder if he likes me because there's like a physical, mm-hmm. like this is just the physical. With lesbians, they'll be like, was that a, is she into me? We yeah. so just scissor. Are we in. just girlies? Are we or, just hanging out as yeah. girls? Are we just gal pals having a slumber party? Yeah. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. So yeah. you've been hanging out one-on-one. Yes. Meals. We went to. Splitting the check. Yeah. Okay. I always like pay for myself. Has she offered have- to pay? No. Okay. She works in compost and I'm a comedian. Like. It's not like if she worked in like a compost is a big job. money. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> she have big money in compost. <laughs> when she's <laughs> her in the her in the suit, she's in the suit all the time. The jumpsuit. <laughs> God, she looks so good in that compost suit. Um, yeah, we like we've been like going and eating and just like talking for hours oh yeah and yeah, then yeah, yeah, yeah. like the other night we like took how many hours like four hours you talk yeah like yeah a lot of it's a date the day and then we took edibles and went and saw this 18 piece instrument band in red hook <laughs> i guess it was brooklyn thing. i know it almost makes me mad <laughs> like when I hear something like that, I want to flip over the table. But it was actually so good. What do you mean? Yeah, that does sound fun. A full instrument band? Are they touring or are they still around? I'll take Jen. Uh, no, they're like Red Hook based. They're in the like folk community <laughs> in Red Hook. The folk, Alex. Folk no, say what you want to say, Everyone's going to absolutely like the roast hardest me. to reach neighborhood of all time and <laughs> yeah. they're based out of Red Hook. Yeah, an 18 piece band. Dude. That's why they're based out of Red Hook. They can't leave. It's like you the, know how hard it is to transport a double base. <laughs> There's a tuba via boat. <laughs> They're on the. I, this is such a niche New York joke. Okay, but here's the thing: Red Hook is impossible to get to unless you go by boat. Yes. So the and yes. it's not even an island. It's just hard to get to. Not by boat. Like I took the train and then there was a 20 minute walk from the train and it felt like I was like in Temple Run because I had to like go over a bridge and then like. <laughs> <laughs> and when I arrived, I was like. <sighs> um, Need a bunch of coins. I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that a Jew joke? No. That- About me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking Temple Run joke. It's a Temple Run Why joke. Why not both? A bunch of gold Maybe coins. he was Jewish in Temple Run. Alex, can you please make an animation of someone in Temple Run con- co- collecting Jewish stars, please? Thank you. 
I know now is not the time, but maybe the conflict will have settled by the time yeah, this episode settles. comes out. <laughs> Quote unquote settled. You know how it's, it's when the dust it, is settled. It settles. Oh, it's oh, just gonna it's, fizzle out. It's just gonna fizzle out. Yeah, totally. But uh, yeah, I talked to her on the phone last night. Oh, you're talking on the phone. Huh. Two a.m. Oh my god, Kylie, you're in love. Yeah, I'm not in love. You love Randall. I love Randall. <laughs> Yeah, and I keep trying to like drop because she's like more introverted. So I keep, I want to take it slow because of what I just told you of all my stuff that I'm dealing with. Um, but then, but I'm like, I want to make it clear that I really think she's awesome. Why but don't like, you just not be say too forward verbatim what you just said to us? Um, you huh. know this is gonna get back to Randall. Randall's gonna see this. The Randall algorithm. works in compost. But no, Randall's gonna see it. <laughs> the algorithm. It, to, to <laughs> it shows up on Randall's page. I love that we call her Randall. Oh my God, you are in love. God. I think so too. I think, yeah. Some strong emotions yeah. I'm feeling. Yeah. She's really special, I think. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And this is going to be so embarrassing if she doesn't like Oh, she's going to find out because <laughs> how many lesbians in compost in Bushwick are there? Or where? Probably that we, that you a would lot, for. actually. <laughs> yeah. But the, co the community is going to know because someone's going to listen to this and be like, oh, I know, Randall. Yeah. Both of them are like, oh. That's how it works. <laughs> Both of them. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess the worst thing is she finds out and she kisses my face. Oh, you guys haven't kissed? No, we haven't. I'm t trying to take things slow, like build the friendship first. I do that with people I actually care about. Well, don't be too cold. Mm -hmm. because Don't play play it too cold because then she might get confused and be like, what is this? Oh, I called and her ugly the other day. You're not supposed to do that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like, I keep dropping like That's hints. a bit, right? Yeah, it's a bit. Of course I didn't call her ugly. The She's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. <laughs> She's Randall. She's, She's Randall. Randall the Grouch. There's no one else like Randall out there. <laughs> I was like, I said something about her being cute. Or then after the band, she was like, we're like sitting in the bar. She's like, wait, this is actually funny. She goes, do you want to go talk to the band? And I go, no, but do you? Like, I'd come with you. And she goes, no, it's just because you're like the kind of guy that would talk to the band after. And I was like roasting her for being like the kind of guy. And you then- You are the kind of guy I that am, would talk to the band after. I know. And- and that was real. And I really like when they knock me down a few pegs. <laughs> oh, dude, you're put sick. Me in my place. You're sick. I love when a woman puts me in my place. It's awesome. Oh, when a woman puts you like to be put in your place. Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared of when a woman does it, but <laughs> <laughs> you're like, mom, me too, I brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's so hot. Yeah. Jen rarely does it with me. Jen, the way that Jen exercises kindness with me when she puts me in my place makes me turns me on in a different way mm. turns me on with love like the people the women the type of woman i used to date would put me in my place and i'd be like oh punch me in the face punch me yeah but with jen mommy she, yeah it's like yeah you know i think it might be helpful if you approach this this way because i worry that people might take it the wrong way if you do it you know like she's so emotionally she's intelligent. so yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it's just so loving. I love her so much. Whoa. What a lot of love tonight. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know it's not good for the pod how how happy I am. <laughs> so what about you, Alex? Are you in love? I, I actually got out of a relationship recently. Really? Yeah. Oh, so you're out there. Out there. How are you feeling about that? Fine. I'm fine. Excited? <laughs> no, no. Not oh. excited. Okay. I, yeah. Because like, we've been open for uh, the whole time. Uh -huh. And it's like, I'm just trying to- right. I was trying to phase out that part of my life, actually. Yeah. You don't want to be open. No, I, I want to I don't want to be in a relationship. Oh, okay. Oh. That's what yeah. I'm Just have fun. Phase out that yeah. part of my life. Finding <laughs> human connection. <laughs> just ready to phase out love and acceptance. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just cause a phase. Because it's, it's work. Isn't it a lot of work? So It is work. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't willing to put it in. I was hurting our relationships, hurting I was hurting him. Well, you're hustling. You're you're trying at the hustle. Yeah. No, forgive me if I'm wrong. Because I really just booked you based on how good you were at stand-up. Oh, stand thank you. I saw you. You made me laugh. I was like, we should have him. And then I did no further research. Yeah. So forgive me if I'm wrong about this. But you're you're still at the hustling phase of yes. comedy. Yes. yes. And it's hor it's horrendous. It's mm -hmm. awful. Yeah. I, I wish it upon no one. 
Yeah, still in that phase for sure. Yeah. yeah. So like, it's hard to it. be in a relationship when you're at that phase. Yeah. yeah, and like he's been supportive, but it's just you know it's been hard to have that choose comedy over everything else. Yes. Yeah. You know, does he have a regular job? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. He was a teacher. Now he works the government. Yeah. Oh, huh. compost. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where are we at time-wise? Uh, an hour, five minutes. I you see, I feel it in my bones. Oh. I know, I know. Well, where can people find you and what are you working on? You've shows, you've regular shows. Yeah, I host a show, I'm doing a show in Caveat, it's, uh, December 15th. Are you headlining it or are you- No, I'm like producing, I'm producing oh, okay. it, yeah. December 15th, Yeah, at Caveat. That's a great, great venue, a lot I of fun. I love Caveat. Yeah. And yeah, I'm about there I, hustling. I don't know if this will be out in time for okay, that show. No, yeah. When's the next one? Uh, sometime in February, actually. Okay, so yeah. what we'll do is we'll, depending on when this comes out, we'll get you to do an audio and just like mouth. We'll ADR it in. Yeah. yeah, we'll ADR. <laughs> March 13th at Rodney's Comedy Club in New York. I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Um, and, and Kylie, what about you? Um, you can find me on socials, Kylie Vincent the first. In the spring is when I can release Bird online. And I think I'm going to do a live screening at a movie theater wonderful. in New York City. That's wonderful. With like uh, art installations. So keep following Kylie on social media so you don't miss the premiere. And then you guys know with me. Guys, Alex, remember the other day when you put in the sad music? I would love to, add, let's like change up the soundboard. I would love to add some like really corny, inspirational, some sad, some mm -hmm. happy, like different moods so that we can have different rants throughout the podcast. Um, inspirational rant. Guys, patreon.com slash WHS. Give us a dollar. Okay, you know we've been through it. And we have three full-time employees who depend on your fucking dollar. How did you get here? Was it a clip from the pod or the or the 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 my comedy? Oh my god, someone you know how many clips we had to put out before you saw it? Like a billion? Okay. Having it every month. Sorry, Alex. How, having it every month means we can predict our income so we can give everybody a raise, you piece of shit. Oh, oh, uh, fuck capitalism. Well, fuck you for not supporting the arts. Yes. <laughs> and Ashley is my president. Yeah. Amen. A a amen. amen. Yeah. Gavin Vincent 24. <laughs> Oh my God, we should do that. <laughs> We're not, you're not old enough, I don't think. Oh. What? Wait, how old do you have to be Six. to run for president? 36? 34 or something, something 35, like that. 35. <sighs> Can Legally, I could only run for president a year ago. I've been qualified for ages. Yeah, no, you've been probably preparing this for your you're whole life. You're born in America, you were able to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Natural, naturalized and at least 35 years old. What about VP? Uh... <laughs> Can they be 23? Well, the way you said it. No. What about VP? <laughs> no, I think because you have to be prepared to take yeah, the oath, pre I think. If Prezi dies, if old Prezi wait, dies. Wait, that's interesting. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Vice president also at least be 35. Okay, okay. Hmm. And what about a, secretary? To, what about, a, a, what about a speaker of the house? Uh, let's this is very, out. this is because the speaker of the house is third in line. Mm -hmm. Really? I would love to get to a scenario where we have an 18 year old president because- yeah. What about like whatever Mon Monica uh, Lewinsky was? 25 years speaker of the house. Oh, so five. we, in theory, it technically we could have a 25 year old president if they were speaker of the house. Get out there. That doesn't- We're never gonna get a 25 year old in Congress. I don't think that would ever be possible. What do you mean? Well, that doesn't make sense. Huh? Third, they're third in line, so- Yeah, but then you'd have to kill the other two people. Of course. Yeah. That's part How of the plan. You, uh, a poison dart. Oh, that was yeah. a quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think I'm allowed to say that on the air. I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed I'm to say that. I'm pretty sure you're not We're allowed not to say about that. You, Biden and Kamala. No, 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 no specifics. No. no, God, no. We need money. <laughs> this, is a, this is a theoretical president. It's YouTube, a theory, yes, and this every is other buddy listening. President. And also, please, in addition to donating to my Patreon, for the love of God, if you don't vote for Joe Biden in this election, I am gonna lose oh. my goddamn mind. People in my comments are like, what about the third party candidate? Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious? Vote your conscience. No, Alex, <laughs> are you, you're, that is a vote for Donald Trump. Yeah. That is, I'm, I'm sure these people are great. I'm sure they have wonderful platforms. 
if you vote for a third party instead of a Democrat, I am going to lose my mind. I get it. It's an imperfect system, but you're not going to fix it through fascism. We have to fix it by voting and then changing the campaign finance laws and the two-party system. (laughs) I'm done. (laughs) Yay. Ashley just changed the whole world. Done solved. Done. America's good. Thanks for listening, guys. Patreon.com slash WHS, $1 a month. Please, guys, if like if like a thousand of you did this, just gave me a dollar, that would make such a big impact for our team. That would be massive. Like, that's actually massive for the team. It would be so helpful for them. So do it for them. Don't do it for me. Do it for Alex. Do it for Sydney and Pierce. Patreon.com slash WHS. And then Gay Thought. Hello. Hi. What's our, what's Pigeon. the gay thought? Well, uh, that's why I brought you in. I don't have one. Every week I have to do a gay thought and I don't like doing this. I mean, it was your idea. No, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> well, it was sort of my idea. People started writing and being like the episodes end too abruptly. That's so upsetting. I was like, okay, I'll do a gay thought at the end. Okay. Um, do you have any gay thoughts? You're my gay thought. I know. I know Ooh. you say that when I ask you that. I don't know what to, else to say. Do I have any gay thoughts? I can help make it funny if you have a premise. You don't have any jumping off point? Do you know I do this every week? Mm. Your TikTok idea was really funny. It's not exactly gay. It's, it's exactly kind of gay. TikTok in general? Yeah. Hmm. Pitch the bit. You want to pitch the bit? It's a bit about the Hunger Games. I haven't seen the new movie. I, I've heard it's good. Uh, Greer and I are going to go next week. That's like our thing, the Hunger cute. Games. Aw. Yeah. My idea was... Two women making it to the end of the Hunger Games and about to win. And they're like, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, God. No, you go. Please. No, this is so <laughs> awkward. Oh, please. No, 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 no. You, you've had such a tough time. No, no. It's, it's Take you it. You kill me. You kill me. No, you kill me. I don't even remember how it ends. Is it like, <laughs> is that, <laughs> yeah. you have to kill the person? Yeah, yeah, you do. Well, I guess that's the whole thing. But I'm then sorry. Do you have to like go this to is the uncomfortable. Thing? This is so awkward. I, uh, do you want me to do it myself? I, I don't want to inconvenience you. Killing, like killing yourself? Yes, yeah, 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 totally. I don't mind no, at all. No, I'll kill myself. I'm sorry. No, please. Seriously. Are you sure? Yes, totally, totally. I feel like you might regret it. No, no, I actually won't be able to once I'm dead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's a bit. What do we think? <laughs> that's pretty good. Solid bit. Yeah, it's fine. It's funny. Is there a Thanks gay again. Hunger Games character? I don't know. I mean, all of them. PETA? PETA? I don't know. He's got like the yeah, game. He, like, the, the, he's like the one that Lenny Kravitz shit. plays is flam- oh, definitely. quite That's flamboyant. True. Oh, That's a good yes. point. That's a good Sina. way to make this a gay thought. Alex, well done. Well done. Sin has got a non binary. Yeah, yeah, he Very does. Smart. Or they do. They? Sinna is he, they for sure. Maybe even all pronouns. All pronouns. Yeah, definitely. That's a safe bet. Yeah. Yeah. I like their eyeliner. Thank you so much, you guys, for Thank listening. Thank you for tuning in. Um, Patreon.com slash WHGS, AshleyGavin.com to get on my text alert and come see me when I tour your city. It's fun, right? Podcasting? No, seeing me on tour. Oh, I was I'm like, insecure. no, why would you do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when Jen's there, she comes out on stage with me. Ah! Yeah. See you there, kids. Oh.